uh, yeah, driveway. you haven't. I don't. Uh, I didn't see oh. that one. Yeah, this is starting. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening for all of you. We have different times in this moment. Uh, welcome to the Green Doll Admin Tool webinar. Uh, in this case, the objective of this uh, webinar with the help of the Marty is to show the use of the admin tool uh, and this webinar was split in six sessions. Uh, we have some recommendation and logistic in this case. The first one, as you can see, the session will be recorded and also I will share with you the the video for for you in this case. The other one, uh, this is the idea. Marty will explain a topic or topics during one hour. During this uh, hour or this time, we we will not accept or interrupt is to Marty. The idea is that Marty continue with the presentation without the interruption in order to finish on time each session. No? If you have questions, please send to us via by chat here or send to us by the email no i will i will send to you the email of the marty and myself also this is possible uh, marty will answer the question after the presentation we have only 30 minutes for the questions uh, please uh, it's important that you should move your mic in order to allow to marty to explain well or allow to others to hear well the, the explanation no um this is the logistic uh matia do you have some comments regarding to the to the webinar or something like that uh not really i would just uh, like to ask everybody to mute their microphones uh uh otherwise juan carlos you can mute them from your end um and good luck and i wish you that i wish that party uh, is able to finish the presentations on time and we'll deal with questions later Okay. Uh, in this case, Hi. please again uh, mute the, your mic. Oh, please all mute your mic microphone. Oh, let me check where. Anyway, uh, Marty, your turn. All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. And thank you again for <coughs> participating in this series. Um, so I look forward to uh, answering your questions. As Juan Carlos said, um, the best way to do this uh, in this fashion is for allowing me to walk through slides or the demonstration. And if you could uh, send your, uh, what I'd really prefer is to receive emails with questions. And that way I can put them together and we'll keep documenting the questions with the answers, but we'll try to have some question time at the end. And um, <clears throat> I just wanna mention here, I put up a credit screen. Again, some people are still not muted. Um, um, <clears throat> I, I just wanna mention that um, a lot of people have been instrumental in the success of Green Global. And so I put up a slide with some credits um, and probably not known to a lot of you is the author of the admin tool was a gentleman by the name of Brock Weaver. And he was hired in the original Green Global project um, by the crop. Well, he was hired through Ames uh, and he actually wrote the admin tool. Um, and Brock, fortunately, I was able to interview him and put together documentation uh, on the admin tool. And of course, uh, my friends, Kurt, Andres, and Juan Carlos are, have both been instrumental in working with the uh, admin tool and um, trying to make some changes to it over the years and just to understand it better. Mattia, Pete Sear have been involved heavily with uh, the Green Global Project and Edwin down at uh, Lima, Peru. I don't know if Edwin's on yet today, but he had signed up. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to consider is, as I go through this, I am not the expert. Uh, I, I don't use the admin tool on a daily basis, but neither does anybody else. 
Um, the admin tool is a tool that you use fairly infrequently. And so I am going to be upfront and say, there may be a question that I cannot answer, but I will promise to try to get you the answer. Um, and I'm also looking at the AT from the perspective of an organization <clears throat> that uses it <clears throat> for running Green Global. So <clears throat> I will point out there are things on the, the AT that are not necessarily uh, used, okay? Or I'm gonna recommend not using. And um, conversely, when Juan Carlos asked me to put together this course, I decided there were a lot of things that the administrator of Green Global should understand, which are not necessarily part of the AT. So I want to cover a lot of that uh, during this workshop. So there's six sessions, as you know, you've seen the topics. And so today's is more or less the overview. So in our agenda today, <clears throat> I just want to make sure everybody and many of you know a lot of this because you've been using Green Global, but we had some people who signed up were fairly new. So I want to go over the components and just make sure we're all the same starting point. And after the overview, uh, the, the main things I would like to demonstrate today are in the AT, how to add users and how to use the updater. So first of all, I always like to start with the quiz. So I'm going to flip over to this mode. Um, <clears throat> I just thought of this as a joke because, as you know, Green Global has a legacy. It goes back to 1983, and the answer is Fortran. So uh, it goes back a ways. Now today, it's not written in Fortran. As you, most of you know, it's written in C uh, Sharp and so on. Um, when was the admin tool written? <clears throat> it was written in the period of 2008, 2010. So we're celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And finally, um, let me move this out of the way. <clears throat> uh, I will frequently use these abbreviations and I hope you know what all of these are. Um, does anybody know which one and for this, you could write in the chat. Um, oh, let me go to the chat on my other screen. Anybody want to take a guess? If you can, you can write in the chat which one of those abbreviations does not belong in the mix. This is an attempt at being interactive. Your chat looks like a little cloud. I'm not gonna wait too much longer. This was kind of my joke for the day. No takers. All right. So uh, all those other abbreviations I hope you're familiar with. Um, MS is Microsoft, of course, and SSMS. Taba got it. <laughs> Matia got it. Good. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Green Global. Uh, if you read the original documentation on Green Global, uh, we described it as being flexible, expandable, and customizable. And uh, it's flexible because it consists of data views, many data views. And it's expandable because you can add wizards. It's customizable because you can put in your own codes. You can turn on or off triggers and you can put it in different languages. <laughs> so um, I took a partial list of the data views and this, you can see if you look at the title bar on that screen is from the uh, AT and um, I was surprised the other day, there's over 800 data views in my local version of Green Global. Fortunately, 
users only work with about a hundred of the data views, the client data views mainly. And as you all know, if you've ever run Green Global, you can have wizards and the wizard toolbar in the curator tool uh, indicates what wizards are available to that user's PC. And um, there's always been the dream of having a wizard manager because different people can develop wizards. And over time, uh, you might have more than, uh, well, there's compatibility issues with versions of the software and so on. And I just a kudos to the SIP team down in Lima who've written something like five or six wizards just in this past year. Um, this is one of the easiest ways that you can customize uh, Grin, and it shows you two things here. First of all, you can see that there are different languages involved, which is fairly simple to do. And uh, although most people are, almost everyone is using English. And then secondly, um, I'm illustrating, highlighted are some codes. And every organization, and I'll talk more about codes, but every organization can add or subtract codes very easy. And you do that basically through the administrator tool. And then finally, some triggers which make it customizable. And when you download a copy of Green Global, you get about 40 different triggers and um, you can enable them or disable them. In my example, I have one currently disabled. If you can see over in that right column, I've got an end. But um, for the most part, we recommend that the triggers are enabled. Uh, and unfortunately, I would say this is my one regret uh, with Green Global documentation. I do not have a good document on triggers. It's always been a goal, but uh, it's just never happened the way I would like it. Um, <clears throat> like it to. There's again, many of you have seen this, so I'm not going to belabor this, but. Um, <clears throat> The operating system, as you know, it requires Windows. And for the database, the original design <clears throat> was for the uh, database engine, it would be agnostic that you could run under any database. But the reality, again, <clears throat> because most of the data view development has been done in the US, and the US is currently using Microsoft SQL Server, Almost everybody else is using Microsoft SQL Server. But in theory, you could use a different engine. And the very first version of Green Global was tested in four different versions, four different databases. Um, oh, there's another point I was going to make about that. But anyway, um, for applications, uh, the Green Global package consists of the web application, uh, which in general is not just the public website. Uh, I have the public website listed there separately, but the web services, which is the uh, heart and soul of Green Global, but um, the end user typically, you know, is just talking to it through their applications, such as the curator tool or the search tool or the public website. Uh, the supplementary software, many of you know, the Crystal Reports is embedded uh, within the curator tool so that when the person downloads the curator tool on their user PC, they also will in, uh, load a copy of the viewer for Crystal Reports, which allows you to use reports that were designed in Crystal Reports. Uh, but unfortunately, you cannot design reports with the viewer. You only view them. And then technically for the extensions, we would consider any form or wizard and primarily the wizards. There's only a few forms that were initially developed for Green Global. And lastly, the components are the data views and images. So this is an old slide that I stole from many other presentations. Um, most of you, again, have seen this. The backbone at the bottom is the uh, Windows operating system. Uh, you need IIS. And then, of course, you have your database engine and then uh, all the data tables and so on um, is where people are communicating with. Over on the left, I have the admin tool, which is typically used by one person, maybe two or three at the most. But um, in the US, for example, you know, we have a large system. 
and there are only two people that actually use the administrator tool, and I'm not one of them. So unfortunately, I can never peek at uh, the settings that they're using. I have to get them to download stuff for me when I want to see examples. And then top of uh, the, the drawing, of course, are the user applications. This is another old slide uh, which talks about Green Global being a three-tier architecture. I just thought it was relevant because um, that business tier is access through web services and the uh, applications uh, connect to the database via that. So this is a slide that I always like to show to users. Um, basically, these are the main components of Green Global and um, you know, the Gene Bank uh, staff is using on a daily basis the Green Global Curator tool and search tool, and then the administrator uses the updater and the admin tool. And that's really evolved over time. Any of you that ever used Green Global many years ago, we actually used the updater as a user to um, install the curator tool. But we've separated that over the years, and now the updater is strictly used for updating the server components of Green Global. And the Green Global curator tool uh, comes with its own self-extracting EXE file, and so it simplified things a bit uh, when we finally went to that direction. And then I put over here on the right the fact that, um, you know, Green Global comes with an optional public website. And it's not just, I always like to stress that it's not just for the end users, uh, for, the, for the Gene Bank staff, but it, I mean, I'm sorry, for the public users, but it's also a very useful tool for the Gene Bank staff, and I'll show that. So the next two slides uh, just put some words to each of the applications. Um, so the web application is the middle tier, and that's where you have your website, the web services, which interact with all the Green Global data, and that's where the calls are made to the database, and that's where the search engine is uh, housed. The updater, uh, as we said, is for updating the server applications now. If you looked at old documentation, uh, it used to talk about the curator tool. And then the uh, other parts are the curator tool, the search tool, and the admin tool. And again, the admin tool in any organization, only one or two people should typically have access to the admin tool. And I put a little note there, it requires a direct uh, database connection. So again, another old slide I've shared many times with many people. Um, when Green Global was designed, it was designed to run on either a simple PC or in a server environment. And proof of it uh, in the local host uh, environment, I run a copy on my laptop so that wherever I travel, I have a full copy of Green Global. But in general, most people over on the right will be set up that way. And that cloud was a premonition because we now talk about the server being in the cloud, whereas before I was using the cloud just to say that there was a indirect connection the server was somewhere and the uh, PCs for the users were in a different location. Again, another old slide, but again, just so we're, we're all together. Uh, whoops, the server has the database, the website, and the middle tier. A user's PC typically has the applications, the curator and search tools. And as you all, if you've ever used Green Global or keenly aware, the curator tool requires a set of lookup tables. And because of that, uh, that means that the user has to install some uh, database engine, and typically it's SQL Server Express. Now, I stole these slides from my friend Juan Carlos, and um, I would allow him to answer any questions that you may have uh, later with respect to these slides. But I thought it was an interesting, I just saw these for the first time the other day, and he's been sharing this with people to show that there are multiple scenarios in which you could set up the Green Global server. And in this first example, it's set up, everything's set up on one server. But in this uh, scenario, there are two servers 
servers involved. And one of those over on the right bottom is where the actual database is stored. Again, you see how the admin tool is connecting to that server. And um, in this configuration, which is a third alternative, and a lot of this, <clears throat> when it comes to ports, you know, I'm not an IT, heavy duty IT person, uh, but um, if anybody has any questions about these diagrams, I'm glad that we, I'm sure that we can answer these. And again, this would be a good uh, opportunity maybe at the end uh, for asking questions about these. And then this is a later kind of uh, scenario. The admin tool is installed on the user's PC. Um, and the reason we, I'm, I'm sure the reason why Carlos put these together is we frequently get questions about running the AT. I found a document from Quinn, um, I just found it last night, and I'm going to uh, edit that document and load that uh, with some input from both Juan Carlos and uh, Kurt. But uh, Quinn Sinnott, who used to be the USDA uh, database administrator for Green Global, retired last August. Uh, he had written uh, a fairly choppy series of emails to somebody. Uh, which I thought had some really good information in it. And unfortunately, I just found it last night when I was digging through some old notes. But it, it talks about setting up Green Global on two different servers. So um, this is not something that's required by Green Global, but when you load a copy of SQL Server or SQL Server Community Edition or Express or whatever version, you also have the option of loading the studio. And uh, any administrator, you absolutely should have this loaded. Um, you can go through the process to go to Microsoft, you do a Google search. It's fairly easy to install, but then it allows you to really look at the database. Now the updater program comes with Green Global, as we said. Again, now it's only used by the administrator. And um, as it's showing here, um, this is a, it's a fairly simple interface. Um, and my friend, uh, uh, Kurt Endress, who is still actively involved with the Green Global team in Beltsville in the USDA, uh, bless his heart, um, he's kind of taken the updater over under his wings. So over the last few years, he's um, made changes when there have been uh, requests and um, he's actually made it substantially uh, better than when it was originally created. Um, so, and, and by that, what, what I'm referring to is the fact that uh, the name of this program was always called Updater, <laughs> but, uh, many times people used it and wiped out their database. Um, and now he's modified it so that you don't, if you follow the directions closely, uh, you won't wipe out your data, okay? But anyway, as you, and I'm talk, I'm gonna talk more about that uh, later in this, in this uh, program today. But anyway, um, as you can see, there are three major components and each one can be checked or unchecked so that you could go in and update, up, uh, update the admin tool or the database or the web application, the web services. And when things are not uh, currently installed or <clears throat> if they're outdated, you can tell at a glance because it says it. It also tells you the version. Um, up here, the updater remembers the last source for where it got its uh, information from. And so that where it's blue uh, will be remembered from the last time you use it. But our documentation that's on the project website tells you where to go get the updater, okay? Um, and I'm gonna come back to that later today. So again, you all know the curator tool, uh, if you don't, I'd be surprised why you would be on today's session. Um, and the curator tool, just to remind everybody, uh, it has requirements. 
So it has to have .NET, it has to have uh, Windows, of course, um, it has to have some version of SQL. Uh, that's an old box there, SQL Server Express. A lot of you use SQL Server Community Edition, and uh, we said earlier that it uses Crystal Reports for the reports. Um, the other application that a GeneBank staff person will use, and it's automatically installed when you install the uh, curator tool, is the search tool. So it comes with the curator tool installation, it communicates with the search engine, and the reason why I put this third bullet is I want to show how, as an administrator, you can have an impact on what the search tool is using. And we're going to cover that in session three. And as you know, Green Global comes bundled with a public website. And there are some people who argue um, that you don't really need to use the public website. Uh, but the point is here, it does come with it. It was originally designed for external clients to be able to search the Grin Global database. And <clears throat> what we did over time, the initial Grin Global developers realized that they could put some utilities in it for internal users. And I want to demonstrate that throughout the workshop. And then finally, the admin tool, and I just took a screen capture. You're going to see this quite a bit over the next couple of sessions. <clears throat> so um, back to the curator tool, it's a .NET application. We said a lot of this already, it connects to the web services application, the middle tier. Um, it's obviously the way that the GeneBank staff typically gets their data into the system and also how they can get data out of the system or they can read it. Um, one of my, I don't want to use the word complaint, but um, unfortunately, Windows and uh, the network environments have gotten so uh, security driven and for practical and obvious reasons. But um, Windows, um, in order to install the curator tool properly, <clears throat> most organizations, you have to have elevated privileges or administrative privileges. And I will talk about some issues about that in session six. We run into this at the USDA quite a bit. And um, we mentioned earlier that it has its, now its own extracting file. So reports, I'm going to talk more about this in session six. Um, but just the fact that the viewer is installed with the curator tool. And um, that's how you see those re reports. So um, how does the seeking? connect to the server. Um, you know, when the CT starts up and you use that icon on your uh, desktop, um, the user can select uh, from a series. They can pick the default uh, uh, server, and a lot of users will just have one server um, listed. In my example here, I've got two, four, six, eight different servers. So I can connect to either of these servers because over on the right, uh, right now this one is highlighted and here are the proper settings. So as an administrator, it's your responsibility to provide these settings to the user. And um, the reason why I, I bring that up here is um, here's a little tip for you, for you as an administrator. I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but um, when the CT is installed, it uh, uses a couple different folders, which I'm going to talk about throughout this series. And one of them is on the user's uh, folder. And so in my example here, MAR is me. I have a folder called App Data, Roaming, Green Global, Curator Tool. And if I go and look in there, I'll find um, several of these different text files. And one of them is the web service URL text file. As an administrator, let's suppose that you have 10 CT boxes that you want to set up. Well, once you install the CT, um, you could go and copy this uh, file from note, you know, using Notepad or whatever, uh, copy it, and then put it on that user's uh, folder 
in the proper place. Okay, and that's the point. It's just um, after you make sure you have the settings that you want each user in your organization to have. So if you wanted to, for example, to have JCA Azure be the default, then you could list uh, this here like this and uh, put it there and you're done. And then you can just copy that file either through a network copy and paste or you use your thumb drive, whatever you're doing. And then we mentioned uh, following the end of the discussion here about the different components. Um, there are forms that are installed and uh, the original idea, and I remember this discussion many, many years ago, this, that each data view would have a form. And unfortunately, that became a very low priority. And so if you were to look today, you will find four forms and these are the three of these are accession inventory and order, which are in a curator tool. A curator tool can see the form versus the grid version. Um, the image is uh, used by the wizards. And then finally, uh, the wizards in Green Global, there are many, and um, there's a folder on the user's PC where the wizards are stored. And you notice what I've done here, if you look closely, a couple of these, I installed a version of a wizard, but then I uh, changed the extension to D-U-L-L -L so that I didn't have to delete the file, but the curator tool does not see that D-L-L -L file, okay? That's my trick for switching back and forth through different versions if I wanna test or look at different versions of a, of a wizard. So uh, we mentioned a public website, it's optional, it's requirements, it needs an IIS web server, uh, any browser you can use with it. Um, and again, it was primarily designed for external users, but what I'd like to do is show you a couple of things you can do to make it useful to as a gene bank staff person. I'm gonna talk about that in this session and in session six. So I'm not gonna to go too much into this right now, but as you all are aware, especially you with the IT backgrounds, that we have a schema with many tables, data views, um, Green Global follows its own naming conventions, ownership fields, parent-child relationships, and um, I could spend two hours talking about a lot of this, but uh, a lot of this has been well documented. So I just wanted to mention that this is all part of the system, the tables, of course, and um, I put a, a note here. Uh, new administrators, refrain from changing the schema. Uh, we have had this happen multiple times where people have gone in and immediately, because of their IT experience, go into the SQL Server Management Studio and start adding fields or even tables or they take stuff out. Um, and what I would suggest is run Green Global for a while before you do anything that severe and then always check with Juan Carlos or with the USDA because we can help you. And of course, there's a data dictionary. You can look for some things, but um, other people with more experience, and now we have a community of experienced people, they can talk about where things are. Uh, I know that most organizations have made a few changes. Uh, I believe the last time I talked to Juan Carlos about this, I think he said they had uh, five fields that they use at CIMIT that the USDA doesn't use. And again, I've used this many times just to show, you know, the fact that Green Global is a relational database with tables all over the place, and we're not gonna go into that here. So um, I do wanna point out um, on the project website, there is a page that I'm gonna refer to in your homework exercise uh, where you can get SQL and run that SQL to get different system information. And every time I get a good example of a good SQL query, I put it into that file, which is accessible through the public website. And so part of your homework is to go use that file 
and look up a couple things. So we'll talk about that more later. So again, just as a quick review, for most of you, this is old news. Uh, the fact that uh, data for accessions is not in one table, it's in multiple tables. And we have conventions so that uh, every table in Green Global typically has the name of the table underscore ID. We consistently use all lowercase, and then the ID is the key, primary key for that table. And then <clears throat> the children tables always refer back using that ID. So um, again, I think most of you are familiar with that concept. Um, we also, just to be distinct about the term identifier, and the identifier in uh, Green Global terms, uh, when we're talking about accessions, it's the prefix number and suffix. Uh, I really should put prefix number and suffix up here. Um, these examples are typical of USDA, but a lot of organizations will use the third field. Um, and so uh, those are identifiers versus there are many names that are often used for an accession. So in this example, what I'm saying is the accession is PI 500,000. That is the identifier, but it has multiple names, purple straw, and these names here on the right. And again, there are different conventions. A lot of this, by the way, is in the AT user guide. Again, it was written many years ago, but a lot of this, you can read up on this. And this I just mentioned. Uh, that every table has the accession ID, has an ID field for the primary key, and then um, every table always has six audit fields. So um, you can, I'm going to do more about this ownership in session five when we talk about security, but there's a table that defines ownership relationships, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll take a look at that in detail. And here's an example of SQL, and I put it here, but you also can find this in my SQL document. But you can run this SQL either in uh, Management Studio or if you have tools open on your uh, browser under Green Global, and you can put this in the query uh, box, and then you can get a listing of the owner-parent relationships. So this is just a rhetorical question for you all, uh, and it's probably easier for you all to stay muted. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the question is, what is a data view? It's a stored query. It's a SQL procedure. It also has some peripheral information. And I just took a copy of a typical uh, data view, uh, and I only have part of it. But you can, in the admin tool, look at the SQL for any data view to see what's going on with the uh, data view. So uh, when I talk about it being consisting of SQL, uh, it has the SQL statement, and it says in this first box on the right, for every supported database engine. So it used to be that we had SQL in there for Postgres and uh, MySQL and so on, but nowadays most people just run it for a SQL Server. It also defines parameters, uh, which are the uh, variables, so that the user at runtime can provide information and then make the query run according to that information being provided. It has field mappings, and we're going to talk a bit about this, uh, particularly in session three. Um, how do you, how do you, how do you get database information from a database into Green Global? And basically, those fields are mapped, and we'll see how that works. Uh, language, as you know, you can have it different languages, and also there are flag settings about what in the data view is read-only, is it user visible, etc. So, uh, how do you make changes to a table? How do you make changes to a data view? You use different tools. You use this, uh, you know. The, the database tool in SQL Server, it's MS, SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. But in data views, you use the data view editor. And that's what we're going to look at, uh, primarily sessions two and three. Uh, we're going to talk about that. So again, a lot of you have seen this before. Uh, this is not a workshop on how to use uh, SQL Server Management Studio. I basically rank 
myself as a little bit above a novice. Um, I know enough to be dangerous. I don't use it that often. Um, I can write queries. I can find uh, files and tables, um, but I'm not somebody that's in there on a day-to-day -day basis like some of you guys are. Um, this is just an example which we'll look at over and over again in the AT. So um, just pointing out that when you uh, accept Green Global and you install it, um, it comes with some tables pre-populated. Uh, this question comes up every once in a while. Uh, I just had one about a month ago where the user was looking for data. And what they were thinking of as, as data was examples of accessions and inventory and so on. And that really does not get provided in a build. Okay, but the build does populate some of the tables and we're going to talk about these tables throughout this webinar series. And uh, uh, I'm briefly talking about these now. Uh, the site table comes with a couple entries, especially number one. And please don't take that out of the database. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this has been a complaint of mine. In 2010, when we first had a running version of Green Global, the codes that were used and provided were codes that had a legacy from the USDA grid system. And those codes, many of those were created by individual curators. So my point here is, and especially I'm going to talk about this more in session four, uh, the two points here are, before you release Green Global to your organization, do some homework and configure these codes. Remove codes you're never going to use. Get buy-in from your curators and try to figure out. If you're not sure, leave the code in there. But it's a lot easier to get rid of codes before you start than to go back in later and we're still doing that. Uh, USDA uh, went live with Green Global in 2015, and five years later, we're cleaning up some of the codes. Um, so anyway, uh, because we're trying to be more consistent, and like I said, originally the codes were made by uh, individual uh, curators. Geography, um, there's no reason in the world why you wouldn't download this, as far as I know, when you install Green Global. Uh, just as a warning with the cooperator records, uh, there are a couple of defaults that are installed and all of these are needed. Uh, the, the FB owner, FB submitter, leave them in there, but they're not really used per se. They were originally designed for feedback, hence the FB. And there's been some talk about starting to uh, review how to get feedback into Green Global. So, just leave those cooperators there. Also, with taxonomy, you're going to get some additional cooperators. Um, and just to be clear about it, in Green Global language, a cooperator can be a person or it's an organization. And um, also, I just want to mention users of CT are cooperators. And I also want to point out that this is the difference between a person and an organization. We assume that it's an organization when the last name is null. But um, I could go on about some different ideas here. But anyway, that's just the bottom line. And finally, an introduction to the, to the admin tool. So let's get started. Um, it's 8.20 my time. We've got about 40 minutes. Juan Carlos said we'd have 30 minutes for questions, but really, uh, I want to do a demo. So today I did not expect to leave 30 minutes, but probably more like 10 or 15 minutes. I just want to give you a quick overview. Um, and these are the initial screens that you have to authenticate. Uh, there's two parts. And I'm going to go, <coughs> excuse me, let me do this. Um, All right, 
So um, here's my desktop, and you're seeing this live. Uh, so I've got an icon because I installed Green Global on the local database, and I have also the admin tool. So my admin tool is a little atypical in that I have several servers I'm working with. Um, this is the one on my local box up at the top, and I'll be using that most of the time. But then uh, my friend and colleague Juan Carlos gave me access to the Green Global Training Database, which is up in the cloud. And if I open up this node, then I have the interface for this server, okay? And I'm just going to, I'm not going to go in here today, but uh, just to show you, in this case, I have two logins. I have a username that's in the database uh, up here with a, as password protected. And then I also have my Green Global login, which is basically my uh, user account, which uh, Juan Carlos has given me administrative privileges. Okay, so I'll talk about that. So um, what I want to do is to use this because of uh, responsiveness. And uh, I'm working directly on my PC here. And um, by the way, uh, people ask what version uh, of SQL. We're using, I'm using here 14. Some people use 18. Um, I don't know of an instance yet where people are using 19. But any version past, older than or better than uh, 2008 release two, will work. Um, but most people, when you use it today, uh, you're getting like 16, 18. Uh, I would steer away from 19. Yet I just I asked Juan Carlos the other day about that. Um, so in my case, since it's local, I'm using SQL Express. And then the database name is typically Green Global. And I'm using my Windows authentication uh, to, to get my information for that. And then my login, in my case, is administrator. Um, and it could have been whatever. But uh, by default, um, you get administrator as the login. And so I point this out in this slide. Um, if you're using... SQL Server Express, you typically put an Express for the server, but my note over here says with SQL Server, it, it expects an instance name. And uh, this is a secret. <clears throat> I'll take a drink. All right. So that's the default. And the recommendation, of course, would be once you change, once you go in and log in as administrator, change the password. Um, I started to talk about the AT menu here, and my first point is don't worry about it. Uh, not everything on that menu is as useful as it you might think, but uh, you can create new connections with the file option. Uh, especially when you're going to do more than one. And then I also have a golden rule here. Um, when you're not sure about something with the admin tool, right click. So I want to talk about adding CT users. And it says here that you want to add a username, password, and so on. Um, and it should be enabled. The CT user, there's a checkbox for enabled. Also, we typically want this, it just logically makes sense that the user is an active cooperator. And for the groups, uh, we must add the user to the CT users group. So here's a slide regarding groups. Let me walk you through that in the demo. So uh, looking at the, uh, options here. This is all the options you have in the AT. I should mention you can open up maintenance 
and for whatever reason, they're on their separate nodes. All right, so that's the only one. The rest, so what you see is what you get, and we're going to walk through each of these as we go through this webinar. So I'm going to jump down to users, and you see a list of the users that are set up on my local host. Now, obviously, these people don't typically connect. Uh, they don't connect to my um, my local computer, but I cheated years ago and took a backup of an existing Green Global database. And so some of you might see your names in here. So uh, uh, here's uh, Simon, there's Chamba, uh, so on. So um, if I'm adding a new user, let's start with that. I right click, new user. And this is the screen you have to fill out for the user. And um, it's a little bit quirky. Uh, over the years, you just learn to live with it. Um, first of all, you give the user a name. So I'm going to, um, let's see. Marty24. Now, um, the username at the USDA, and I'm going to talk more in session six about LDAP and giving user access through that method, which quite frankly, I don't actually use myself personally, but um, the usernames historically at the USDA have been the person's email address and they just found that easier. So uh, I'm going to use an email address, but it doesn't have to be, okay? And then it says password must be set before saving. All right, so I'm going to make a password for Marty24. And obviously you can show the password And I'll talk later about password rules when we talk in session six, how you as an administrator can change some requirements about passwords. So there are five tabs. The general tab asks for basic information about the person. Um, unfortunately, that does not use a drop dropdown uh, uh, title, which I wish it did. Um, All right. Now, um, I'm doing that this way, all right? But I could do this a different way. I just want to point this out. Um, if you have just a few users that you're adding, this is perfectly easy to do, easy enough. Fill out these fields and you're done. But um, my suggestion, when you're adding users is to first go into the curator tool and put those users into the cooperator table. So they're not users yet, but they're cooperators. So this search tool, I'm going to cheat and use this to search. And until I click here, okay. So son of a gun, there's four different rice singers with the name Martin. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna pick this cooperator. And as you see, it populated some of the fields. Now it didn't have everything, but it filled in the organization. It filled in the organization abbreviation. You can see why this would be uh, typically a better way to do this. Uh, you know, if everybody that you're adding is the same organization and the same abbreviation. You don't have to type that 25 times. So you just type it in the curator tool or in Excel, drag your spreadsheet from the Excel to the curator tool. And then with the curator tool, you can do a search. Okay. Um, for the discipline, I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, breeding. I like breeding. Okay. And, um, 
for the job, this is just a text box. Uh, right? And um, I have to pa I have to set the password. Uh, I don't remember if I actually did it. I thought I did, but uh, maybe I didn't. So I'll make sure. All right. And what's kind of weird is that save button right now is still not set. Well, the reason is because there's a required field over in geography. And um, I typically, uh, let's pick this up. I'm surprised that that save button was not alive, but um, the geography also got picked up from the cooperator record. So again, another advantage including the site code for the organization. So um, before I leave this though, let's go back to uh, this field. Uh, now, that was some contact information which you can leave out. You don't have to have that in there for the purpose of a curator tool user. Same thing with notes field, okay? You can type in notes. But what is critical is groups. So. I need to put this person in a group and I'm going to do the ad and then it prompts me. So it's kind of weird. The save button wasn't alive, but now it's asking me, do I want to save now? So I say yes. So this is one of those quirks. Now, when it, it came through, it actually saved that record. So that new user account has been created, but now I have to add that user to a group. And you see it, there is a group that's right there called CT users. So by default, every user was already added to the all users group. And um, I added the person to the CT users group. Now, let me go back to permissions. Um, I'm gonna talk more about this uh, interface in I think it's session five. My point here is that everything is grayed out as you all know from experience with the CT, you really can't change it here now anyway and you don't have to worry about it. So um, really the only thing you have to do is add the user to the CT users group. And back to general. I'm going to come back to web log on uh, in a second. Now, um, it's really, it, it might have been noticeable. You might have noticed this. I didn't notice it when I was up here focusing on the screen, but it did add the user to a group uh, just a little while ago. So it's safe for me at this point to cancel. And if I go down, what did I call it? I called it. Uh, Let's see, where is it? All right, so I'm looking for it here. Let's do this and try a refresh. And now I can see it. So Another quirk of the AT is sometimes things, uh, the AT has uh, a caching uh, capability and also it doesn't refresh immediately. So many of the screens have a refresh option. So again, I just right clicked and picked refresh and then the new account showed up. And if I click on the account, it opens up the screen that I was working on, all right? So let's go on with the slides, make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, and I put these slides so you would have this kind of as your uh, documentation. Now, <clears throat> the next related topic here is the fact that if you're a public website user, you typically register at the public website, all right? But internal staff with a public website account um, they can be added and I'll, let me demonstrate this. So I'm gonna go uh, to the browser.
and your local host, I've got it set up that I actually am looking at it here with the public website. If you look at the URL up there, it says local host, green global search. I'm gonna uh, register a new user. I'm gonna pretend I'm a new uh, user and I'm gonna use that same email address. You have to do it twice. And to keep life simple, I'm gonna keep that simple. It's not gonna let me though. Let's see. I believe I'm gonna get flagged. Yeah, I have to have eight characters. All right, uh, sometimes you have to have 12 and it's up to you how you set this up. So I'm gonna do this, okay. Hopefully it's the same thing. So I'm creating a user account as a user on the public website. And I have to go through all this stuff. And I'm not going to fill out everything. All right. As an aside, I'll briefly mention this. Um, there is a new public website in the latest build. And the USDA is going to do another build probably next week. A lot of these people are off this week for Thanksgiving in the United States. But in the next release, uh, they will have some fixes to the public website that was released in August. And one of those is a problem here with the state um, when doing foreign uh, countries other than the US. It was uh, screwing up when the shipping address was being created. And that bug has been fixed in the next release. All right, so real quick, all right, there's no validation of that, okay. So this user has created an account. Now let me go back to the AT. And what I wanna do now is, this is a staff person that I set up um, because I gave them access to the CT. But now what I want to do is go to their web log on and um, give, I want to add them to, I want to tie the user's uh, curator tool account and their web account. So I'm going to do a search and um, let's see if that works. All right, there it is. So I started typing R-E-I-S and look what it did. It actually found it in there. And there's the new guy that I just created. So this is my public website account that you just saw me create. Now I can also give the person a web password here, but that person already created the, that password. I just want to mention that because you don't have to override that. But as an administrator, um, if you were in here, let's say fixing a person's CT account, you could also change their public website account. And, and make sure you tell your users, these are two different accounts. Uh, I don't know how many times we tell people that and they still seem to get that confused. Um, anyway, the last thing you need to do in order to make this work is you want to add them to another group. You won't typically see a lot of this is from training, but there's a web query users group. And it says, let me widen this. Enable users in this group to use tools menu. 
with web query. And that's what we want. Enable users in this group. So I have successfully done that. And down at the bottom, again, it's weird because it, it says that that's been added. Uh, that user has been added to that group. And uh, I'll just click off. And let me demonstrate that. So if I go back to here, when I was a user, I did not have tools as an option. But now, um, let's try a refresh. And uh, it didn't work yet. Let me log out. Hopefully, I'll have this down correctly. I always tell users to do that, so as long as you're in your browser, okay. Ah, what am I doing wrong? Um, let's go back. I think even though that person's there, uh, it didn't save it. There's a user error on my part. <clears throat> Okay, so at this point, now I can save, and it saved it over on the left, the bottom left. Let me see if a refresh will show that. Keep your eye up here. There you go. So what I've just done is I've tied in the CT's uh, user with their public website account. And this is what I would like you to do in your exercise tonight or whenever you do it before the next time, uh, because this allows you as a internal uh, gene bank person, you can now populate this with SQL queries as long as the query is just a, a read only query. You cannot insert, you cannot delete, which you can select and read. Okay. This is an invaluable tool for your gene bank uh, staff people. So uh, that's enough on that. Let's go back to the presentation. And um, I just want to briefly talk about the updater. We're getting close. We got about 15 minutes left. So um, there's a critical step to take before running the updater. And again, I would like to make this interactive. On your chat, in one word, what do you think that critical step is? Anybody? See who wins a candy bar. One word. Sarah Trinder, very good. Back up. Back up your database, okay? Never take a chance, all right? So how do you back up? You use SQL Server Management Studio or whatever your tool is. My screen just died, come on. Bear with me a second, I need a, my screen was sitting there for an hour on the other computer. All right, now I can see it again. All right, so after you back up, then you can run the updater, all right? And again, as I said earlier, there's three components. And um, you may not need to back up all three components. You may only want to back up um, maybe not the database, but the admin or the application. Chances are, though, you may want to update the database, but that um, is confusing because it makes it sound like 
you're getting a fresh copy of an empty database. That is an option. But chances are what you want to do is to keep your data per se, but you want to update it, the database with any new fields that Green Global is now using or any new tables, which is very rare. Uh, although we just had one this year, a taxonomy regulation table was added. Um, but anyway, uh, so I can't do it justice to show you the updater without spending like two whole sessions on all the different options with the updater and taking the chance of basically screwing up my database. So uh, again, the number one rule before was to right click. And with the updater, the number one rule is follow the installation guide. And uh, I looked to see when I last updated it. Um, that guide was um, updated this year uh, during our COVID experience. And um, it is current. If you find anything in there that's not correct or misleading or confusing, just let me know and we'll look at it. But um, it's like a 20 page document and it's the Bible for installing and updating uh, Green Global, okay? And uh, don't try to run the updater without using the document. So there's the link to it. Uh, again, I could spend a lot of time talking about the updater. And at this point, it is 847. So uh, like I said, we'd take about 15 minutes um, and uh, before I forget, um, do I have that slide? There's, how did I get? Um, just in case some of you duck out. Um, let me copy this before I take questions. And how do I do this? Uh, Chat, chat, chat. All right. All right. I want to do a new chat. Come on. Uh, okay. Why is it stuck? It's not letting me chat. Any case, uh, we will, I'll send an email out afterwards with those links, but um, the point here is um, it's weird. Uh, there is a homework exercise. And I'd like you to try to do that. And also the PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to keep loading these and we'll also include the recordings. So uh, Juan Carlos, uh, one of the things he wrote in chat was, um, <clears throat> could I mention this uh, uh, next session and um, let's do that. In the next section, session, I'm going to talk about uh, data view basics. And really what I'm going to talk about is pretty much everything you need to know about how to use the admin tool editor. So uh, we're going to have a lot less slides and um, more interaction. And what I'm gonna be covering is this node. Um, let me go into here. Let me just pick, well, let me pick client.
And really, to me, this is probably the next two sessions are the main sessions uh, that get to the heart and soul of the admin tool is working with the um, data view editor. So this takes another 20 seconds or so. So what you're seeing right now is a list of the data views. And I'm looking at the bottom of my screen. It says there are 888 data views. It's really not quite that many. But what we're going to do in the next two lessons is talk about everything there is to know about the screen. And there's quite a bit of uh, resources here that we'll get into. So um, in the third lesson, it will be a continuation of this. Plus, we're going to talk about uh, data mapping and some other things. And so uh, the ta I said table mapping. So, so there's another node in the admin tool. So we're, we're kind of working our way down uh, the screen here. I asked the developer one time, and that was Brock Weaver, was there any systematic reason why these things were in a particular order? <laughs> and his answer was, it was just in the order that he wrote them. <laughs> So uh, he apparently wrote groups and users and so on. So any questions, uh, open up your mic and uh, we'll try to either answer your question or get to you later with an answer. And it looks like Juan Carlos uh, posted the, and so did Yassine. Thank you guys. They posted the link in the chat. It's funny, I can do it over there, but I can't do it here. Any questions? Well, if you think of a question later, please email it to me. What I like to do at each uh, session is to review any questions that came up from since we last met. And um, also, I'll typically start with a quiz. So that means you better do your homework. All right, so um, we're gonna meet again Thursday so there's not a lot of time, but uh, good idea of the, what we admin tool, and um, and we'll go from there. So if there aren't any questions, um. Either anybody, Yassin or Juan Carlos or Mattia, anybody else want to mention anything? Um, is well, it to say, uh, sorry, then Marty. I guess. Marty, yes. sorry. In this case, it's important also to know uh, we want to get some comments or suggestions for the participants in order to is say to do something in the next session or to make uh, other kind of the presentation. I don't know. Your comment regarding to this session uh, is better to us in order to improve the next session. If you have some comments from the participants, right? Um, so uh, to that uh, example, and since we're going to talk about data views and data view editing. Um, ideally, that's the types of uh, questions we would like to have. Um, but again, um, look at their, I believe we sent out a document at some point with the topics. I'll send that out again too. So you can see the, the six sessions, what will be covered. And you might think of something that I didn't put in there. So if you do, feel free to suggest it especially those of you who have been working as a, a Green Global Administrator. So, 
Well, All right, um, I'll see you again uh, Thursday morning, um, my time, 7.30, your time, and uh, we'll go from there. Yes. Thank you, Marty. You're welcome. <laughs>